this lecture we are going to talk about moment distribution method which is a structural analysis method used to analyze indeterminate structures. It was developed by Hard Cross, an American structural engineer in 1930. Consider a two-span continuous beam. If we apply all the steps of moment distribution method to this beam over here, we obtain these end moments that is MAB, MBA, MBC and MCB. So the first subscript over here indicates the point at which the moment is produced and the second subscript indicates the far end. Similarly, this moment over here is produced at point C and has B as its far end. Furthermore, the sign convention for moment is taken as clockwise positive in moment distribution method. The first step in the moment distribution is the locking process. Each and every joint of the continuous beam is considered as fixed and applied a fixed end moment. Fixed end moments, these moments over here, don't allow any rotation at the support or at the joints. Consider a two span continuous beam. Both of these spans, AB and BC, are converted into fixed end beams. And at the supports as well as at the joints, fixed moments are applied. This F over here indicate that these are fixed end moments. So how do we obtain these fixed end moment values? We can obtain the values of fixed end moment by looking at the fixed end moment tables. This table over here is present in the structural analysis book written by R.C. Hibbler. It is located at the end of the book. You can also google the term fixed end moment table and you'll find variety of resources related to it. So here we can see that for different loading conditions we have values of fixed end moment for left as well as right support. Let's say that in your quotient one of your span is subjected to UDL of intensity W then you are going to use these values over here. So for left support FEM is equal to WL squared by 12 where W is the intensity of the loading and L is the length of the beam. Similarly, for right hand side, it is equal to the same value. No matter what loading condition acts on your span, you just have to match it up in this table and use those values of fixed end moment. Now, the other steps in moment distribution method are unlocking process, distribution process, and carryover. So, let's discuss them together with an example. Consider a two span continuous beam subject to a UDL and a point loop. First, in the locking process, we are going to apply a fixed end moment and lock each and every joint. Let us assume for the sake of discussion that MFBA is equal to 4 and MFBC is equal to minus 5. So the net moment at this joint, that is the joint P, should be equal to 0. But if we add these two moments over here, we get the net moment equal to minus 1. And in moment distribution, clockwise moment is taken as positive as sign convention. Here, this moment is coming out to be negative, so it's acting in counterclockwise direction. Now we need to balance it to get the net moment over here at joint P equal to zero. To do that, we are going to apply a balancing moment which is equal in magnitude to net moment but opposite in direction to this moment. So we know that net moment was acting in counterclockwise direction and we apply a balancing moment which is uh, acting in clockwise direction and has same magnitude as the net moment. After that we are going to distribute this balancing moment towards the left as well as right of the joint P. To do that we are going to use the concept of distribution factor. If I want this moment value over here I am going to multiply balancing moment with this distribution factor over here to get this value. If I multiply the balancing moment with this distribution factor, I am going to get this moment value over here. Now how do we calculate this distribution factor? Let us say we want to calculate the distribution factor BA, which has B as its near point and A as its far point. The distribution factor BA is going to be equal to KAB divided by summation K, where K is the stiffness factor for this member over here, KAB and 
summation k is going to be equal to the summation of the stiffness factor across this joint. So kab plus kbc will be equal to summation k. And kab is equal to 4ei over l. Assume a beam having a fixed support at right side and a hinge support at left side. Now, if we apply a moment, it is going to have some rotation over here at point A. The stiffness factor in this loading and support condition for this member over here is going to be equal to 4EI over L. If we observe, this beam is similar in loading and support condition to this beam over here as well as to this beam. Because if I apply a distributing moment over here, at this end of the beam, this will rotate. But the far end is considered as fixed due to locking process. Similar goes for this moment as well. If I apply a distributing moment over here, this point will rotate. But the other end is fixed. There will be no rotation over here. Now the last step is the carryover. What happens when you apply a moment over here? Half of the moment is transferred to the fixed support. Whatever moment you apply over here, half of the moment will be transferred over here. So same goes for these two beams over here, these two segments. If I apply a distributing moment over here, half of that moment will be transferred to this support over here. This is what happens in carryover process. Moment distribution method is an iterated procedure. That means we have to keep on repeating these same steps until the net moment at the joints is equal to zero. Now let's apply these steps to a problem. In this question, we have a continuous beam consisting of two span, having each span length equals to 5 meter. The first span has moment of inertia equals to i. The second span has moment of inertia equals to 2i. The first span is subjected to a UDL of 10 kN per meter, and the second span over here is subjected to a point load. First, we are going to consider this member over here as fixed ended member. And then we are going to calculate these MFAB and MFBA, that is fixed end moments. These values over here are obtained from fixed end tables. So if you calculate MFAB, it's going to be equal to minus WL square by 12. This negative sign indicates that this moment over here is acting in anti-clockwise direction. Whereas we know that in moment distribution method, the clockwise moment is taken as positive. This W over here is the intensity of the loading of the UDL and 5 is the span length. If you, if you calculate it, it's coming out to be equal to minus 20.83 kN dash meter. Where MFPA is equal to WL square by 12. W is the intensity of the UDL and L again is the span length. And if you calculate it, it comes out to be equal to 20.83, positive 20.83. Now we are going to consider this member as fixed ended member. So MFPC is equal to WAB square upon L square, where A is equal to 3 and B is equal to 2. A is the distance from the left support to the point load, and B is the distance from the right support to the point load. So if you calculate MFPC, it's going to be equal to WAB square upon L square. W is the magnitude of the point load. A is this distance over here and B is equal to 2 and L is going to be equal to 5 meter. So MFBC is coming out to be minus 4.8 kN dash meter and MFCB can be calculated using this formula over here where W is the magnitude of the load, A is this distance over here and B is equal to 2. If you note, observe the difference between these two formulas, here B term is squared and in this formula, A term is squared. And FCB, if you calculate this, is coming out to be 7.2 kN dash meter. Now we are going to calculate member stiffness factor. So the member stiffness factor is equal to 4EI over L, where E is the modulus velocity, I is the moment of inertia, and L is the length of the span. So for first member, if I insert L equals to 5 meter, KAB comes out to be 4EI upon 5. And for the second member, KBC is equal to 4EI over L, where I over here is equal to 2I. 
and if I insert L equal to 5, then KPC comes out to be 8 EI upon 5. Now we are going to calculate distribution factor. So the distribution factor DFAB that is over here is going to be equal to the stiffness factor of member AB divided by total stiffness at this joint. The total stiffness at this joint is going to be equal to KAB plus the stiffness provided by this fixed support. The stiffness provided by fixed support is going to be equal to infinity. Why? Because this fixed support does not allow any rotation to take place at this point. It does not allow any rotation. There is no theta over here. So if we have an infinity in the denominator, then the value is going to be equal to zero. Similarly, DFBA can be calculated. DFBA is going to be equal to K, KAB divided by total stiffness factor about this joint. So KAB divided by KAB plus KBC. If you calculate this, this comes out to be equal to 1 upon 3. Similarly, DFBC can be calculated. DFBC, that is the distribution factor over here, is going to be equal to KBC divided by total stiffness at this joint. So the total stiffness at this joint is equal to KAB plus KBC. And over here, the distribution factor is going to be equal to KBC divided by KBC. The stiffness at this point is provided by this member only. This hinge does not provide any rotational stiffness. So that's why this distribution factor is equal to 1. After calculating distribution factor and fixed end moment, now we are going to use this table for further calculations. So the first row over here indicates the joint. There are three joints in this continuous screen, A, B, and C. And the second row indicates the members that are attached to these joints over here. So to A joint, we have one member attached, that is AB. To B joint, we have two members attached, BA and BC. To joint C, we have only one member attached, that is CB. We have calculated uh, the values of distribution factor and fixed and moment uh, in the previous slides. So this over here is DFBC. This over here is DFBA. And this is MFAB, that is fixed end moment at AB over here. And let's talk about this one. This is MFCB, that is fixed end moment over here, calculated over here. So this over here indicates the distributed moment. So how do we calculate this value over here? So first of all, we know that the fixed end moment at A is minus 20.833. We need to calculate the balancing moment. To balance this moment, we need to apply 20.833. Whatever the value of fixed end moment is, multiply it with minus 1 and you will obtain the balancing moment. So the distributed moment over here is going to be balancing moment multiplied by DFAB. That is the distribution factor over here. If you multiply DFAB with this balancing moment, you are going to get this value over here. And it comes out to be equal to zero because distribution factor over here is equal to zero. What about this value? How do we obtain this value? So at B joint we have two fixed end moments that is 20.833 positive and negative 4.8. To obtain this value, first of all we calculate the balancing moment. Balancing moment is equal to we first take the sum of both of these moments and add them algebraically and then we multiply it by minus 1. Then we obtain the balancing moment. Now we need to distribute this balancing moment here as well as here. If I multiply balancing moment with this value over here, I'm going to obtain this value. If I multiply this balancing moment with DF BC, that is this one, then I'm going to get this value over here. So the distribution BA is equal to minus 5.344 and the distributed moment BC is equal to minus 10.6688. So 
So what happens at C point? So at C we have fixed end moment equal to 7.2 and the balancing moment is going to be equal to minus 7.2. To calculate balancing moment, you just need to multiply the number, the neck moment with minus 1 and you will get your balancing moment. When you are done with the calculation of balancing moment, you just need to multiply it with a distribution factor, corresponding distribution factor. That is, the corresponding distribution factor for CB is equal to 1. So this value over here comes out to be minus 7.2. Now we are going to discuss the carryover process. So, so we know that in carryover process, when you apply a moment, half of the moment is transferred to the other support. So let's say if I apply a moment over here, half of the moment should go over here at B. But this moment should go from A B. From here, it should go to here B A. This is zero. Obviously, half of it is going to be also zero. Now the moment over here that is at BA is equal to minus 5.344. When we apply a moment over here, half of it should be transferred to here that is AB and it's going to be equal to minus 2.672. Similarly, this moment from BC, when you applied it over here, half of it should go over here that is to C, that is to CB over here. Then 7.2 minus 7.2 should also go to, that is the moment applied over here, should also go over here at, at BC. You just have to divide it by 2 and then transfer it to other end of the beam. That's it. So again we are going to repeat the same steps that we did in this row. So first we are going to calculate the balancing moment for this moment over here. The balancing moment is obviously going to be equal to you just have to multiply by, by minus 1 and you will get your balancing moment equals 2.672 and if you apply distribution factor, multiply distribution factor with this balancing moment, you will obtain this value over here. Similarly, at B point, you have two moments. You just first, you first need to calculate net moment and then multiply it with minus 1 to get the balancing moment. And once you get your balancing moment, you just need to multiply it with if you multiply this balancing moment with this distribution factor, you are going to obtain this value over here. If you multiply this thing with this distribution factor, you are going to get this value over here. Similarly, at C point, we have this moment. To calculate balancing moment, just multiply it by minus 1 and you will get 5.344. And then multiply it with a distribution factor, that is 1. And if you calculate, you obtain your value as equal to 5.344. Now if you keep on repeating these steps, keep on repeating this cycle, then here we note that these values are significantly smaller. Then you can stop over here. Or if you want, you can uh, do more cycles. As the number of cycles increase, you will get more refined result. So how do we obtain these end moments? You just have to add these numbers from FEM till here and you'll get this moment over here and if you add these values from FEM to till distribution uh, then you're going to obtain this value over here similar goes for uh, both of these columns this end moment MAP is acting in counterclockwise direction because we know that in moment distribution clockwise moment is taken as positive this moment is acting in clockwise direction and this one's acting in counterclockwise direction so these are the end moments that I obtained in the previous slide minus 23.324 this was negative so this is going counterclockwise and this was positive so it's going clockwise and so on now how did I obtain these values over here these reactions these are the reactions uh, due to these end moments now how to calculate them so first of all, you are going to treat them separately. This segment as well as this beam span. Calculate the net moment acting on this beam over here. So the net moment acting on this beam over here is going to be 23 minus 23.324 minus 23.324 plus 15.888 divided by the length of the span. And, and you will get this value over here. 
the net moment over here is equal to minus 7.444, which means that the moment net moment is acting in counterclockwise direction. This means that these reactions over here should act in such a way that they should create a couple which is acting in opposite direction to the net moment. So the net moment was acting in counterclockwise as it was negative over here and the and the reaction should act in should create a couple which is acting in clockwise direction similar calculations will be carried out for this beam as well so if, so if i calculate the net moment it's coming out to be equal to minus 15.88 which means that it is acting in counterclockwise direction and these reactions over here should act in such a way that they create a clockwise movement which is opposite in sense to this net moment over here. And if I calculate the reaction, if I use this formula over here, this is coming out to be 3.172. Now I'm going to calculate the reactions due to these doors over here acting on these scans. You can also use conditions of equilibrium on these segments, but I've used these formulas over here. So W over here is the intensity of the UDL and L is the length of the span divided by 2 and you will obtain this value over here. Similar goes for this reaction over here. For this reaction, we are going to use these formulas over here. So A over here is equal to 3 and T is equal to 2 and L is the length of the span. If you use this, you'll get this reaction equal to 4 and this one equal to 6. After calculating the reactions due to end moments as well as due to load, now we are going to add these two beams together as well as these two beams. Now if we add them together, we obtain this beam with loading configuration and reactions. First of all, you are going to apply these end moments and then you are going to add these reactions. Now how you are going to do that, if they are in the same direction, they will be added. 1.49 plus 25 will give 26.49. Here 1.49 is going down and 25 is going up. So 25 minus 1.49 will give you 23.51. Similarly, you can calculate this value over here in the similar fashion as well as this reaction. In the next part of the video, we are going to look at how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram using these reactions and end moments. If you have any question regarding this topic or anything discussed in this video, you can write it down in the comment section. I'll try my little best to answer. Thank you.